Hi everyone, this is Chanty. Today I'd like to talk about making games in the browser. So, you know, you might be familiar with your, your 3GS and your Babylon JS. Um, if you've watched my last couple of videos, you can see that that's what I've been doing for the last, you know, couple of weeks. I guess playing around with these JavaScript frameworks, trying to find like my my niche, you know, or my, get my sort of like, get my bearings in the world of the browser uh, ma making video games. You know, I, I come from a, a Unity background where I'm used to everything being statically com statically typed and, you know, compiled and, and you know, uh, there's a certain, I guess, mindset that comes with that where in JavaScript it's kind of like, hey, do whatever you want, which is kind of cool, but at the same time, there's there's something that I've, that I've felt like I've missed from from those um, uh, for, yeah from those compiled language days. So I started to have a look at the possibilities about what I could do in a browser uh, with a you know compiled language, and of course you know uh, WebAssembly is the hot topic at the moment, and 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 th th there are a few options for WebAssembly. I and I did try um, I, I did try the C plus plus M scripting route. Um, you know, I, I have done some C++ in the past and <laughs> I don't know, g g going back there after being a web developer is, is, is hard. It's like, it's like going back in time, you know, you got all your, all your build systems and your, oh, all this syntax, which is, you know, tricky to remember, uh, that, that that I I eventually just said like actually I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look at these other alternatives and of of course there's a assembly script which uh, is a you know uh, web assembly first language and and it gives you the it gives you that that compiled language sort of feel with the a, a lot of the ease of use in the ecosystem of uh, of JavaScript and TypeScript which we know so well and which has so much momentum behind it. Uh, so, so it makes a lot of sense to me. So I had a look at uh, graphics and games in assembly script, and here we are with Kura. So Kura is, I guess, um, it's gonna be doing the graphics for, for a game and also be handling some of your uh, common, uh, you know, game systems like uh, collision or, uh, or input, that sort of thing. Um, but it, yeah, it's very sparse at the moment, very new. And so, yeah, maybe I thought I'd, I thought I'd sort of go into it a bit, show you, uh, show you the, uh, where we're at, at, at this point. So I've got this website. Um, the, the, the website's kind of, it's partially to, uh, you know, to share what I'm doing and, you know, if it garner any interest, if anyone's interested in, you know, playing around with it or, you know, talking about the source, that sort of thing, contributing, all that, all those sorts of discussions I'm open to. And, and the other part of me making this website is partly just to, I guess, clear the way for myself or, or help myself to start thinking about, you know, the next steps of what I'm wanting to build, why I'm building it, and, um, you know, a roadmap, all that sort of thing. I, I guess sort of, yeah, just by writing about it helps me to clear my thoughts. So uh, here we are. So we got the, uh, the Kura, Kura Dave, you can hear my, my cats doing away. Um, anyway, we, we got the we got the Kura the Kura Dev uh, site. You see, I got a little demo here. Oh yeah, we got a blog. Whoops, I accidentally clicked on that. A little bit of a blog, and I've got this demo here. Uh, you're gonna move around a bit. Uh, this is pretty, you know, quite simple, but hopefully starting to get a bit of an idea of, um, I guess, starting to get a bit of an idea of what's needed to make an assembly script uh, game framework. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, this is Leo's in my room. <laughs> um, Leo's my cat, by the way. Uh, yeah, okay, so so um, we've got the demo. Uh, we can go to the docs. I've got a little bit of information about the approach here. Um, now, th now, this sort of chaining is something that I've borrowed from a library called Exe. This is uh, Mozilla's um, ACS architecture where they'll, you know, uh, basically you add your systems, you add your um, components, entities, and th there's something really nice about this way of working, uh, where you can, where you can basically like let's say I've got a bug with my health system, but the but the input system's creating a lot of noise or something like that. Well, if I just comment out the input system, everything will compile, but um, but we just won't have any have any of that behavior. So so there's 
So there's something really nice about this sort of um, approach that, that I've borrowed. And yeah, okay, so yeah, I'm also, I'm using these words like entity, like I got this note here, I'm using these words like entity component system, um, but I'm not doing anything with like uh, uh, data layouts at this point. Um, yeah, it's something. Yeah, it's, it's something. At this point, I'm really just focusing on getting the uh, developer experience going. Actually, making a game in assembly script, and then I can look at you know optimization that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, okay, so so that's the introduction. Some notes on getting started. Um, getting started. There's a little demo. You can see just a little bit of how you might add like a mesh, and yeah, you might notice that this is sort of uh, you know. Geometry material might look a little familiar to those who have worked with 3JS. I've also borrowed some of their sort of uh, approaches and terminology. Um, and, and also, like, yeah, it's, it's been great just looking at, uh, looking at the source for libraries like 3 and Babylon.js, just like getting to know how people are, are making these libraries and, um, uh, yeah, working out, working out, you know, oh, this algorithm works here and you can use that there. And um, it, it's been really cool putting it all together. Um, anyway, so yeah, I've got this, got a couple of notes here just about, you know, about this uh, sort of hello world. Now I've also got a um, code sandbox, I guess to demonstrate what your development environment might look like. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got, as I've, as I've noted here, it's, it's possible to compile assembly script inside the browser. And then it's like, oh great, well if you can compile assembly script inside the browser, then uh, then then you know you could just make your little code pens and make your little um, you know JS fiddles, that, that sort of thing. Um, uh, j j just using you know scripts and that that's and scripts. But but I haven't yet found a nice way to get the whole library to sort of compile inside the browser. I'm not quite there yet. So at the moment, it is you do need to be working, you know, with Node, um, uh, with the you know the Node assembly script compiler, uh, and yeah, and, and so I've got this sandbox basically demonstrating that um, how this might look. So we might just quickly go over that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so we've got the package. As you can see, we've got Kura is a dependency. You'd install that like you'd install any other dependency. Um, and and then when this when this con particular container starts, it's going to start your live server. It's going to serve everything in index HTML. Uh, what we could do so that yeah, that's just so that's just serving that. I might I might have a look at um, I'll have a look at the assembly first. We'll have a look at the assembly first. So so here's like a sort of a you, you got this sort of main function. Um, You'll notice on line, on line eight, we're basically taking our assembly script library and we're passing it through to JavaScript just, just so we can get some of that glue uh, talking to each other. You know, JavaScript's gonna get the, uh, get some of those like, um, uh, you know, what's an example of this? So J JavaScript needs to s speak to uh, assembly script. For example, if there's like a, someone presses a key, well, JavaScript's gonna need to tell some part, like some, some part of the assembly script, oh, a key has been pressed. Um, also, assembly script needs something from JavaScript. Assembly script at, at, this, at this point needs the uh, WebGL layer from JavaScript. So that's also passed through. So that's what that's doing on line eight is allowing those, um, those glues to happen. And okay, then we're sort of like, okay, so we're just getting this world. Like this API is really, like really just putting it together, um, it's, it's all quite fresh. It's still sort of just, it, I need to play with it to work out what's uh, th the best way to do things, but this is how it is at the moment. Um, okay, so you get your world, get your geometry and your material. So, and, and then you sort of just put it all together. Uh, so for example, I could change this unlit vertex color mesh. We could change that, for example, to a, a lit, uh, so it's, sorry, it's an unlit shader. We'll change that to a lit shader. Um, I could save that. And now I'm just gonna show you what's going on in the, show you what's going on inside the terminal. Okay, I don't know if you can see that a little bit better. Uh, I'm just gonna create a new terminal and then I'm just gonna say uh, npm run as build. 
Okay, now, uh, Code Sandbox is, is doing its best here. It doesn't always happen, but what, what should be happening now is it'll compile the assembly script, and then that live server will say, oh, something's changed here. I'm going to do a hot reload. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how we go there. Um, it may not have worked. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, so okay, we'll have to manually reload. <laughs> it sometimes works. So, for example, I reckon if I did this again, I reckon it'll probably work the second time. Any, anyway, you, you can sort of get the idea. Um, that, that's how you might sort of put together your game, put together your scene. Of course, you'd be creating your own, you know, and extending like components and uh, creating your own systems, etc. Um, but this is kind of just like a hello world. And once you're once you've sort of done that, then you're gonna uh, also have your index HTML. Okay, yeah. So it's I think yeah. Okay, so it's 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 hot reloading now. It's just because it's in Code Sandbox. It, it's it's a little bit um, yeah, a little bit rough around the edges. So hopefully you'd be doing it all in, in your local environment. Anyway, anyway, so you can see on line twelve we're just adding. Uh, Adding the adding the, basically the Kura, I'm, I'm calling it the Kura loader. Um, so so what that's going to do is it's going to add this init Kura function to the uh, to the window, and you can call that, pass in this uh, web assembly, and as long as you've got this bit export star as Kura source, uh, export star from Kura source, that should compile fine. That should it should say okay, I know what to do. I've found. I've got my glue in JavaScript. I've got my glue in in uh, WebAssembly, and they've they've combined, and everyone's happy. And the only the only thing we're doing is we're over uh, we're overloading or over uh, overriding the main function with our own main function. Uh, uh, that's it. Yeah. So that's it, pretty much all that's going on in this demo. And yeah. So th so that's how that's how the demo works. You'll find it on the uh, tr tr on the uh, on the website, you have a play with it, have a download. I'm really keen to hear what you think. Um, and yeah, of course, it's all on GitHub, so feel free to have feel free to have a have a dig through that if you're interested. And uh, and yeah, and I'll, I'll be on the. I guess I should probably mention I'll be on the assembly script uh, Discord. So yeah, if you've got any questions, I guess you can at me. Um, yeah, where is it? Uh, join our Discord. Here we go. So yeah, assemblyscript.org. If you just go to the Discord, join our Discord server, then uh, yeah, I'll be there. All right, cheers.